Okay, once again, hopefully you become comfortable with those chords in Lesson 5. Well, one of the most common things, just as a side note, before you continue now on to Lesson 6, as a side note, a lot of people, they overpress on these chords, they overpress on the individual notes, and especially on chords because if one note isn't quite fingered properly, then people have a tendency of just pressing way too hard to get that one note that doesn't sound correct to, to sound out. So using the pressure sensitive touch on each of your notes, you shouldn't have to, uh, you shouldn't have to exert too much pressure to get these chords to sound. And I just want to keep you, have you bear that in mind as a side note if you're still having problems with lesson five. But now onward to lesson six. Lesson six is where it starts to become very interesting. This is as close as I've been able to come to how to play the guitar in a rather piano fashion. Because on a piano, whether you're familiar with it or not, on a piano, it's a series of keys lined up in a straight line where you can de readily depress notes simultaneously or hit single notes. And on the piano, you can play a chord and you can play other notes with that chord. On the guitar, it's a little trickier, but I think I've managed to come up with a way that would allow you to enjoy the guitar more thoroughly when you have to play alone. This style is called chord melody. This is where we get to tie the chords and the scale together and create a simultaneous playing of the chord and scales together in a simultaneous fashion, which once you understand this principle of playing chord melody, you will then be able to play your graduation piece. First of all, we want to take the chord of C and depress it. And what I want you to notice first is that we can play one note. That constitutes a single tone. If we play two, we have two notes now of the chord. This refers back to lesson one where I told you, you you can strum through the combination of strings. So I've got my pick starting on the fifth string. I'm playing two. This lower note, the C, is the lower of tone. The next one is E, is the higher of tone. That higher tone is referred to as the melody. The melody tone is typically the highest tone produced, which we then begin to realize that we already have different melody notes available in the chord dependent upon how far we strum into the chord. So if I strum two, this E on the fourth string would be my melody. If I go three strings here, I'm playing string five, four, three, the G then becomes my highest tone. Playing to the second string, C becomes my highest tone playing all the way through, this top string becomes my highest tone. So if you just listen back to that, here's a single tone, two, three, four strings, five strings. This is the first rule to understand. And I also want you to notice the two points I always bring up. Get your pick set up first on the string. When you play through two strings, let your pick come to a rest on the adjoining string. Three, my pick came to a rest on the B string. When I played four, my string pick came to a rest on the E string. Then all the way through. What you want to do now is go through each chord and do that. On a D minor, you have one note, then two, then three, then four. E minor, the same. We've got a lot more notes in this chord, so I've got one note would be a single tone, two, three, four, five, all six strings. F chord, one note, then two notes, three strings, four, G, one, then two, three, four strings, five strings, six strings, A minor, single tone, two notes together, three, four, and then five, and you can tell as you start working with this through each chord, you begin to hear that as you move up each string, 
that the sound goes up, and that's your melody tone. Okay, that's our first step. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the notes of the C scale and add them to the chord in this fashion. First, on the top string, number one, the first string, we have open, and then we have first finger, first fret was F, third finger, third fret was G. That gives us E, F, G. Now, those three notes are not going to change. What we're going to do is we're going to use different chords with those same scale tones. To give you an example, first with the C chord, we get our C chord, get our pick set up on the fifth string here, and then that E is already there on the top string. Now, to get an F note, I'm going to have to do that bar. Now, the only note changing in the chord is on the first string. All these other notes of the chord have to be maintained. So I've got a bar so I can keep this C note that's on the second string. I'm going to bar. Now I've got a C with an F. That may sound a little peculiar by itself, but it does have its context. Now we're going to go to G so I can get back to a regular C chord. You always go back to the regular chord and then add the note of the scale. So that gives me C with an E note, C with an F note, C with a G note. We want to proceed through and do that now with each chord. D minor, I'm going to make my D minor chord first, then I'm going to lift my index so that I can get a D minor chord with an E as a melody tone on the top of the chord. Then by adding the first finger back, I get that F note, which is already a part of a D minor. To get G, I add my pinky. So it's the same three scale notes. The other notes of the chord are being maintained. E minor, I get my E minor chord, and then open E, then an F, then a G, an F chord. Now, if I want to get an open E, I've got to lift my index up, so I'm not barring then to get this open E. I get F with an open E note, F with an F tone, F with a G. Same thing with the G chord. I'm going to make my G chord, but then I'm going to drop the pinky lift it up so that I've got an open E note. Now all the rest of the notes of the G chord are still intact. So now I have a G with an open E, then an F, then a G. I'm going to do the same thing with A minor. A minor's already got that E note in it. To get an F, I've got to bar because I want to maintain this note of the A minor chord in there, which is on the first fret of the second string. I get my bar, I get A minor with an F, and I get A minor with a G. Okay, so it starts coming out real interesting musically when you can start being able to do this. This actually takes you into more of an intermediate uh, phase of playing. And even people who have played the guitar for a long time don't really understand how this works. So I feel uh, that this is something special that I'm conveying on this video for guitar players in general, and people who love the guitar and want to learn how to play the guitar in an enjoyable fashion. What I'd like you to do, too, is I'd like you to try this principle on the second string as well. On the second string, we're not going to be playing the first string, so our pick is only going to strum through the second string, and it's going to keep stopping on string number one. So we may not require all the notes of the chord that we've been playing before. I'll demonstrate it. That's the best way to, to understand what I'm talking about. If we go to go to a C chord, what I'm going to do is lift my index now to get an open B. I should first say these three notes on the second string to remind, remind you is open B, C, and D. That's that open one, three. Those notes are going to stay the same for each chord. So now proceeding with the C chord, I'm going to lift my index first. That gives me C with an open B note. And my string came to a rest on string one. Then I go back to the regular C chord. Then with the pinky, I can get a D. When I go to D minor here, see, I don't need this top note of the chord because I'm not going to strum that far. So you can get rid of that F or that index finger on the D minor now because we're dropping off that string. So all we've got left of this D minor is this open, second finger, second fret, third string, third finger, third fret of the uh, second string. And we've got three notes there. Now, if I want to add these three scale tones on the second string, it's going to be open B, C, and D. For E minor, that's 
E minor with open B, C, and D. F is going to be, well, I don't need the bar now for F because I'm not going strumming that far. My pick keeps stopping on the first string. Now I'm going to have open B, C, D. And then for G, I don't need that my pinky on that G chord because I'm not strumming that far. I'm just strumming to there, uh, to the, through the second string. Now I can add my index. Now my pinky, that's G with an open B, a, a C, and a D. Same thing with A minor. I'll get my A minor first, lift the index. That's A minor with an open B, a C, and a D. Okay, so that's how to add the scale tones to each of these chords with notes on the first string and the second string. If you learn this and you get comfortable with it, then you're playing the green sleeves as your graduation piece. It should, should become pretty readily for you. Shouldn't have a lot of problem on your graduation piece then. So take the time to get accustomed to. You have the advantage of having this in a video format where you can constantly rewind the tape and go back and look at your close-ups and look at what I'm doing, what I'm explaining, until you can get comfortable and accustomed to what I'm explaining to you here. Uh, please have fun. Enjoy yourself. Uh, take a rest. If your hands hurt or bother you a little bit, keep resting your hands. And have fun with it. Uh, this stuff works that I'm teaching. And if you stick with it, you'll play guitar. I'll see you for your graduation piece on lesson number seven. Thank you.